What's up guys, Chris with the Body Damn Channel. This channel is all about food, fitness, and how to live an active, healthy lifestyle. So I'm gonna show you this leg workout that I did today. It's pretty basic, but at the same time, you know, do it in a slow, controlled form with good warming up. I think it's a really good way to, you know, activate a whole lot of muscles at once, because two of these movements are definitely, or actually, really all three of them are very, basically compound movements, meaning that your entire body is essentially stabilizing or working in some different way. So the three primary movements I'm doing today is a front squat, right? I'm going to do a deadlift and I'm also going to do squats and then I'll finish it off with some calf raises. So let's go into the gym and let's bang it out. All right, what's up, Bod Damn fam? So the first thing I do on leg day usually is stretch my lower back and this is basically a look behind type stretch. Actually, I learned this stretch in Bikram yoga back in the day. So essentially what you want to do, and I have a hat on so it's, you really can't see behind, but you're trying to look at the wall behind you and stretch. And my feet are almost up in a duck position. They're at 45 degrees out. Can't see it on the ground right now, but that's the very first stretch that I perform right there to get my back, my lower back loosened up. After I'm done doing this stretch, I usually end up doing a lumbar extension type stretch, which you see right here. So you want to place your hands in front of you a little bit wider than the shoulder and um, basically my hands are about where my chin is when my chin's on the ground and from there all I'm trying to do is um, you know extend my lower back but never let my actual uh, belt line or my hips come off the floor as you can see right there so this is a very important kind of stretch and basically I am not really holding at the top or anything I'm just doing it with my breath so I exhale then I come down I'm inhaling and then I go out and I exhale. Once I'm done exhaling, I come back down again. I like this one a lot. This one really helps me loosen up my lower back, which did get tweaked about a week ago, tiny bit, nothing crazy, but that's primarily one of the reasons why I'm not going super heavy on this workout today. After that, basically what I do is I uh, do a little bit of some uh, underbar back rows. And I think this is really important when I do the uh, squat movement because when I'm in the squat movement, um, you know, I'm bracing, but I'm bracing my core, I'm using my actual middle and upper back to um, you know, stay tight to make sure that the bar is uh, nicely braced over there. So um, when I do the squats, basically I want my, my back to be loose and ready to go. So that's the reason why I do these on actual uh, leg day. It doesn't really make much sense, but to me it makes a lot of sense because I've pulled my back before on leg day, believe it or not. All right, then I basically proceed with these leg swinging routines. I try to get 20 on each direction going. And this definitely helps with the flexor muscles of the hip and um, it's definitely a good way to get everything super loose. So I'm trying to go all the way to the pocket line on each direction. As you can see, my shoe is ending up right about where my belt and pocket line would be. And uh, that's definitely one of the things that uh, I think helps on leg day to loosen everything up before you get into uh, medium or semi-heavy type weights. So you can see that I'm going the opposite direction as well. I could probably stand to bring up my foot a little bit higher on the uh, swing right there, but it's pretty decent and it's getting everything warmed up really nicely. So I also brace myself as you can see right there. I'm holding onto something steady. I don't really want to do this. Um, you can do it laying down by the way on the ground, but it's a lot. I think it's a lot better when you're standing up because you can actually get this like pendulum effect going on with your uh, feet and everything. So you can actually induce the swinging to uh, bring your uh, foot higher to the pocket line um, so I, I like it a lot then i go into actual front and back ones as well and um, this one i'm really focusing hard i'm kicking in front of me and then i'm actually driving my foot backwards as well to get um, you know all the flexor muscles nice and warmed up so i do that and then i definitely repeat it with the other leg as usual i'm bracing myself there in the squat rack as you can see Anytime you deal with warming up for any muscle group, they mean the ultimate goal here is longevity when it comes to working out. Because ultimately, longevity is the way to build serious and good muscle. You know, aesthetic muscle, uh, confidence within yourself. Um, you definitely want to remain in the gym and remain active for the longest period of time. So I don't ever usually go max heavy days or anything like that. Um, but I definitely do a lot of warming up now because it's a longevity play for me when it comes to working out. Then I actually get into the front squat, so I'm just uh, front squatting the bar right here, um, and I'm just trying to get deep and then deeper and then deeper on uh, my movements. So I don't start super deep on the first one, but as I progress, I try to get deeper and deeper. And this is one of these movements that I recently revisited, um, and so my form isn't super, super perfect on this, but essentially I'm really trying to sit behind myself 
on this workout and I'm trying to break parallel um, so when my uh, legs get parallel to my to the floor I try to break that a little bit and go a little bit lower to get full recruitment of my leg muscles both the hamstrings and the quadriceps so um, that's the way I do that one that I actually put uh, my working set um, which is right after I do another set of 25s on each side this is my working set right here and I'm just doing a four by five um, definitely trying to break parallel right trying to get really nice and deep and then come back up and uh, essentially I'm taking a deep breath going down and I'm exhaling coming up uh, pretty nice I have the catchers there on the actual squat rack just in case but usually you never use them and there I go racking the weight we'll get another angle right here uh, a little bit duck footed and uh, like I said I'm revisiting this um, my form is you know probably 85% or so uh, definitely want to keep your back nice and tight brace your core and uh, you want to make sure that your back is not uh, you know curled forward or anything like that and essentially I'm just kind of trying to sit behind me like there's an invisible chair behind me and I'm uh, putting the actual bar over there pinning it with my shoulders and my hands then I proceeded onto the squat I started warming up in the squat with just a 45 on each side and uh, this one right here I'm trying to get to parallel and a little bit less than parallel so as you can see I'm starting right there and I'm starting to try to get a little bit lower and lower and um, I like the squat a lot because it's probably definitely it's definitely the number one compound movement um, ever of all time so it, you know believe it or not almost every muscle here is uh, working in some way on a squat so then I put a 25 on each side after that and I proceed to get about seven to eight and this is still my warm-up um, I'm sitting there and uh, I'm watching my form bracing my core and uh, I plan to do uh, 225 today so you know I'm just trying to get everything nice and warmed up sitting nice and tight in there and uh, trying to get low as low as possible I don't want to get super low but you know what they say ask to grass and try to get as close as you can so I like to break parallel just a little bit and then come back up um, so here's the 225 set right here and there I get to parallel and a couple times I get lower than that but uh, essentially this is you know I would say probably I don't ever know what my one rep max is I don't ever mess with that because like I said I play the longevity kind of thing and I don't want to be out of commission because I did a one rep max or I tried to show off to some friends or anything like that so 225 is a good little working weight with me today especially after tweaking my back a tiny bit last Wednesday which was a week ago it was only tweaked for a day but still you know it makes you think and it makes, puts things into perspective and I really thought my form was completely on on all those lifts so and I have a feeling I know why it was tweaked because um, it was directly after a vacation and so um, that's usually one of those times where you don't want to go into weight like this you know you kind of want to back off a little bit and then revisit your uh, strength as you progress down the weeks um, here I am going to start getting the deadlift going on so I get the bar out um, no straps involved right here and I'm just trying to get that bar really really close to my shins as I come down and then the finishing movement once there's weight forward the finishing movement is actually a, like almost like a pelvic thrust forward as you can see right there but uh, I'm keeping my chest out and keeping my shoulders pinned back as much as possible um, and I'm really really riding my shins down while keeping my back nice and flat through the movement okay um, now it might not look flat, but it actually is flat when it goes down and kind of comes up, the back stays flat, then there's a pelvic thrust at the very end, and that's essentially um, the movement of the deadlift. Of course, when you start putting weight onto it, like you see right here, then I start breaking out the straps, I put on the straps, and uh, it's a lot easier to get the straps really locked in when you're coming from a catcher, which is what this is kind of, it's catching the weight before it hits the floor, so when it's in a catcher, it's very easy to actually put um, your straps on really nicely so that's what I'm doing right here they got on really tight and good you can see and then you can see that I'm gonna ride my shins all the way down all right and try to sit on an invisible chair behind me right about there I'm sitting in that invisible chair and then I'm coming down letting the weights hit the floor coming up you know bringing up my hamstrings to bring me on the first about you know 60 to 70 percent of the movement and then my lower back is the one that's finishing it kind of out of the very top and so, um, you know, one of the ways you can get better at deadlifts is to do this thing called rack pulls, which we'll show you in another video, but uh, essentially rack pulls, uh, you know, help you with that pelvic thrust thing at the very end. So here I have 225 on, which is basically a 45 on each side. This, these are bumper plates, by the way. And I could go thrashing them around, but I'm not that kind of person, right? I like to control my weight and uh, 
you know, make sure that my straps are all good. And then here I go riding my shins down again. I come up, trying to slow it down going up. I mean, start trying to slow it down going down, and then I'm coming up at a pretty decent rate. But as you can see, you know, this is not hard for me, but I'm, I'm also, you know, playing that longevity play again. You know, I don't want to get hurt, and uh, I'm just doing some decent weight for the morning. I literally woke up like 45 minutes before this workout, or even 30 minutes before. So I am in the gym fresh out of basically sleeping. So um, here I am, you know, tightening the straps, getting everything ready, getting my feet ready. And uh, this is another angle right there of the actual deadlift. And it's an easy movement, but it takes a while to, uh, you know, get right. So I'm sitting there and my chest is out. And uh, my shoulders, I try to pin them back as much as possible. And I try to ride the shins down with straight arms, as you can see. And uh, it's a great movement. It's right under the actual squat when it comes to uh, you know, muscle recruitment in the body. Fantastic thing to do. And then we'll look at one of the last sets right here. As you know, um, now the weight is on the ground. It's not in the catcher anymore. So I'm starting from the ground on uh, my working sets. And uh, here we have 225. We have 245 because there's a 10 at the, uh, at the edge there. You really can't see. It's a bumper plate. So there are 245s on each side um, and a 10 pound weight. Um, one of those things when I start is I try to get you know, semi-psyched up and uh, going through my head right now is I gotta make, gotta make sure I brace my core, my back is nice and flat, and I get my form right. And I'm trying to really feel it in my hamstrings. The most important thing, I'm thinking about my hamstrings. I'm thinking about the muscles that are working out because that's where it really matters, okay? You don't want to be thinking about your back or anything. You want to be thinking about your hamstrings and knowing that everything else is bracing itself for the movement. And uh, one more angle right there, as you can see, now you can see that 10 bumper plate right there. I can do a whole lot more on deadlift, but you know, right now, I'm just going with how I feel in the morning, and I felt like doing this, and I could have done way more, but uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just taking it easy <laughs> because of last week. So uh, then I finish it off with the calf raises, which are, you can do standing calf raises, seated calf raises. I love doing calves like nearly every day that I'm at the gym. So. Um, uh, here we have calf raises. I'm warming up with whatever this weight is. I don't really think about the weight as a total. I just look at the discs and I know, you know, my target is to get to five or six 45 pound discs. That's my target. So here's my warm up right there. And on the next frame, we're going to see how I actually placed my feet this time. Now my ankles are in and the top of my feet are out. I'm trying to work the inside of my calf. So. Now I'm going to unlock it. There, it, it's going to be unlocked here in a second. There it is. And then now we have a total of two 45s, a 25, and then two more 45s. Um, so this is now, um, you know, not my super working set, but it's about to be. And I'm getting more warmed up. Now you might think you're not going down far enough or whatever. You know, typically on a seated calf raise, what dictates how far you can go down is the grip on the actual machine and the actual shoe that you're wearing. But yeah, so basically I'm here finishing out with uh, about 5.45s in weight total, and uh, I feel pretty good. I'm completing a 4x5 of this right here, and it feels good. I always go super heavy on my calves. So I love working out calves for sure. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, I'm trying to get better at these voiceovers, so do me a favor, hit the like button. And if you want some more clarification or if you need some more workout tips or maybe some diet tips, whatever, put your comment down below. I'll definitely see it. Last but not least, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe button. Why? Because I plan to go live soon with live workouts and a lot of fun stuff. And you're going to want to tune in and ask questions live right there. It's going to be a good time. But it's fantastic to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next Bodam video. Take it easy. Goodbye.